This is the face of passion. This is your host, Jess Paul. And this is Will It Mold! Will It Mold. I said Will It Mold. Today we are exploring the uncharted territory of casting real food to make fake food. Man, if there was ever a first world craft. And we shall discover together what will withstand the mold making process. Seriously, if you uh, if you clicked on this video thinking that we were going to rot some food, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I hope this is quite as interesting. Midnight on Sunday, Jess, what is our first contestant? Chocolate Chef Cookies! These have been sitting in my room for like five hours now. So we did a little baking this week on This Is Just Paul. Don't worry, I didn't work too hard. This came right out of the Nestle Toll House tube. I divided my cookies out into different sizes and shapes to get a variety of both natural and more perfect cookies. I even went as far as to take a section of the dough and pick out every single chocolate chip because I really also wanted to make a real sugar cookie that I could also cast, but I wasn't gonna buy an entire other tube that I would consequently probably eat before I'd ever get to use it. It worked, who knew? In the last stretch, I was just kind of pinching out all of the, the very last of the very warm cookie dough and, and then separated the chips so I had kind of this pile of really gooey, warm bits of cookie dough and then a pile of chocolate chips that had just remnants of dough on it. And this is what I call the mostly chips. <laughs> For context, this is what a regular cookie looks like. It's, um, it's a little bit on the dark side because it's filled to the absolute skin with chocolate. Let's give it a go, shall we? That is a lot of sugar at one time. I can feel my teeth rotting out of my head. But that's not even the coolest part of the cookies. The coolest part of the cookies is the cookie board that I just made. So for our mold today, I am going to make one of my classic designs from my store that I used to do in the old felt stuffed animal kind of way. But now that I'm using real casts and sculptures to get very specific reliefs of very specific foods, you're gonna look like you're wearing an actual bakery on your head. Welcome to my cookie board. I think we've got them all in here. Welcome. Take the tour. For our sculpture today, we will be making the classic cookie crown. Now, I know that it doesn't look like much and a little bit weird. I assure you, we can paint it whatever we want. We have a selection of cookies. Uh, the sugar cookie, which we can ice and put some sprinkles on. Uh, this, this is whatever you want, you know, it's your imagination. And then up here, on the upper part of the board, we're just going to cast some really great final cookies that came out of the oven. So that we always have some options when we are constructing a piece from scratch. For the weird green cookies, we took our spackling and paint recipe which is just adding paint to some spackling. I added in my flax meal to create some texture, and soon we had a thumbprint and peanut butter cookie, despite my allergies. No allergies when it's made of whole filler. And for our next contestant in the Will It Mold competition, this one's pretty special to me. This was one of my first non-donut bestsellers of all of my stuffed animal foods. And now that we're going for realism, here are our next new foods. Pancakes! I hadn't made pancakes in like years before this morning. I'm surprised that they came out as good as they did. Don't mind the color because again, we can paint it anything. We can paint it rainbow. All of our options are open. So I'm going to be making a, uh, wow, perfect. A little pancake stack So here we've got our pancake stack. To be quite honest, I remember mine being a whole lot taller. You know, when you have this on your head, well, okay, let's let's try it out, shall we? Well, no, I mean, that is uh, very distinctive, but I think 
that we can add a little bit of height to make it a little bit more exaggerated. I say as I try to balance three pancakes on my end. But as a vocal connoisseur, I have self-studied a tad when it comes to dressing food, making food look as good as it possibly could. <laughs> Like a tall stack to you? Oh, who thought that I would be growing up to glue pancakes together at 8 o'clock at night? Actually, this is almost defeating the purpose of the height if I try to squash them all the way down to each other, right? Oh no, I'm messing them up now. So I made another thicker batch, threw them in the freezer, and essentially gave up. And now a look into how they're made. So one of the first things that I want to show you is a new toy of mine, something I really hope that I'll enjoy. I'm adding to my weird tools that I bought off of Amazon list. It's a leather hole punch. <laughs> you know, you can just like buy these on Amazon. It's a hand crank meat grinder. I paid $15 for this. It was like really on sale and it was pretty evident. When I took a look at some of the parts after opening this box, <laughs> home packing tape and all, I found some residue on some of the most important parts being either rust or mm, meat. God, someone probably sent this back so many times and they just keep shipping it out to people. Took a good old Brillo brush to it and hopefully it's uh, good as new. And what are you doing with this meat grinder, Jess? Well, I had sort of a late education on how to most efficiently use your prop making supplies because I guess I can't type anything into YouTube. And I learned that one way to save on silicone costs is to take some of your old silicone molds that you've made some gigantic mistakes with and you can grind them down and add them to the silicone. I had learned that the only thing that sticks to silicone is other silicone. I actually did try this. I didn't even have the meat grinder and I just cut up some of the silicone, put it into the liquid and I cut that sucker open and I kid you not, they just melted together. I think it's witchcraft. This is the closest that I get to magic. So I've collected all of my mistakes and shortcomings when it comes to mold making. Honestly, this isn't even all of it. I'm sure that I could find more around here. And we're going to go find a place to bolt this onto somewhere because there's definitely not a surface in my room that I feel comfortable about. That glass desk will break. You got a good view? So I am going to take from my little silicone reservoir some of the smaller pieces because I'm really not... We're going to start small. So that we understand, um, if, if the smaller pieces don't work, none of this, none of this will. So uh, cross your T's and dot your I's, guys. I mean, whatever. All it has to do is literally come out of this hole. Staple it down good enough. It's making so much noise. what it was supposed to, but I'm not sure if I care to do this. Like, the excitement is really done for me. <laughs> the silicone is everywhere. If you're unaware, uh, this liquid silicone comes out to be very much like bouncy ball material if you ever stole one from uh, Toys R Us. Nope. Eh? It's, it's, it's in my rug forever. And all over my apartment. The cat's a smurf at this point. And our third and final contestant for Will It! 
what? This is like opposite of health and fitness week. <laughs> So for our finale, we are going to try to mold some pizza. Now, when I was preparing for this, I tried to think strategically so I wouldn't be failing at the last minute. I cooked half of my frozen pizza last week, enjoyed it, but also I saved a piece. I can't imagine what my roommates would have thought if they opened this to see one lonely soul slice of pizza. So this has been in the freezer for about a week. And as you see, it looks like a piece of pizza. Oh, you're losing it. Oh, well, I guess we're gonna have to glue those down. I froze the pizza because I'm 100% sure that frozen pizza will actually mold. Spoiler alert. But what we don't know is if a freshly cooked piece of pizza is gonna make it. The thing about this silicone is that if it is done correctly in the right conditions, you follow like the literal three steps of directions, you will get an incredibly detailed cast of whatever you're doing. You will see every single pepperoni. No! You will see the herbs in the pepperoni. The texture of the meat that was probably put Cranking, chopping, and dicing up my silicone for way too long, this is what I ended up with. Along with it being a smaller yield than I was hoping for, I also noticed a lot of dirtiness and dinginess amongst the stark blue of the silicone, most likely from the dirty returned meat grinder, which is really the only way that this could possibly fail. By adding contaminated silicone to fresh silicone to break up the mold. But. In the spirit of This Is Just Paul, we're gonna do what we always do because we're just curious as cats and we want to see what happens. Roll that poor porn! I use my go-to queer, queer acrylic. I use my go-to clear acrylic. Roll, whoa. 